<laughs> Perfect start to my presentation. Uh, thank you for having me today. First of all, you'll notice that I am not Frank Malco. He's our co-founder. He got delayed in Tel Aviv, so uh, the sales guy fills in. So uh, bear with me, all the engineers and developers. We'll get through this together. Um, so we're going to talk about the API-driven mobile core, uh, specifically in enabling IoT use cases is going to be the focus. Okay. So what do we think about mobile communications today? So first, when we think about what uh, the mobile networks, we think of them as reliable, to the point to where we just assume that our mobile phones are always going to work, right? Uh, secondly, we think of them as global. Uh, it's a global service. So as we look at towards IoT, it's a perfect function for, for IoT and a global, and a global service for, for use cases such as transportation and whatnot. Now, there are some downsides to the mobile network, as everybody knows. Uh, they're typically closed. The MNOs are very protective of them. They don't want you messing around with them. They don't want you access to the HLR, HSS, these type of things. Uh, they're consumer centric. So not a whole, uh, everything's bundles. Everything is uh, right after the consumer pricing models and whatnot, and, uh, and that's what we're used to. And everything's a commodity, they're fixed. Uh, not a whole lot of customization going on within the mobile network, at least to the developer community and, and, and whatnot, okay? So how, how do we see this changing? So we see a drive for openness starting to, to accelerate. Uh, not only the MNOs, but this is also being driven by the MVNOs and also the enterprises. So the MNOs are, who own the networks are beginning to see this openness as drive for themselves because of, of three main pillars that we see. Uh, the embracement of OTT services. So as all the panels and all the speakers before talked about, that's typically what CPaaS is talking about. Uh, the, the, the operators are losing a huge amount of revenue to the OTT services, so they themselves want to get into the OTT business. Uh, a good example in a mobile, mobile view would be uh, Verizon's Visible, right? So Visible is their own MVNO that they launched. It's an over-the-top mobile core, cloud-native, completely separate than their consumer core that they've had running for years and years. Uh, and it, billing separate, SIM management separate, it's all over the top, but using the radio infrastructure just like a typical MVNO. So this is a, an example of an OTT themselves would be doing this. Um, another pillar we see is a convergence of enterprise services. Obviously mobility and enterprise, managing devices, security profiles, these type of things. And then the third where we'll focus on today uh, is machine to machine and, and internet of things, right? The, the next big thing, right? Uh, I don't think the numbers are being realized just yet in IoT, uh, but obviously it's taking off and it continues to grow and there's more and more use cases that we, that we see every day. So, uh, before we get to the use cases, let's talk about what we typically see uh, as the challenges for um, uh, the providers when it comes to the uh, uh, to, to IoT. I'm sorry, I'm going to click over some notes because I just learned these slides as well. Uh, first, the operational challenge, right? So this is not consumer devices anymore. Uh, these devices won't call you and ask you for an update on the bill or trouble ticketing or something like that. IoT devices are going to be in the field, and so this requires you to be in constant touch with them, analyze, monitor, and so forth. Uh, second challenge would be a business uh, challenge, right? So typically the, the operators are providing uh, consumer-based packages and offering and pricing. This is different in the IoT world, right? Uh, uh, products can be 10 to 15 year life cycles. The pricing has changed. There's not as much data consumption, but there's a lot more devices. So the whole economics is completely different and it's a challenge that they have to, to uh, overcome. And then as we start looking as why API-driven core is really important, there's an endless variety of use cases that are out there today. Right? And so this is the importance of, 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 of looking how APIs can transform that and meet those use cases. Okay? So this was a study that was done uh, a little over a year ago, specifically at 5G. Right? So tons of use cases. Everybody knows this. Everybody has seen this. Um, right? So there's so many of them out there. But I think the real key to this is it's not just 5G. These use cases apply to 2G and 3G as well. And that's a big key. Uh, those, those technologies are still being used today. And the, and the points that we're drawing on this is that the endless amounts of IoT use cases that are out there, that not one size or one solution fits all, right? So this is dri thus driving the need for API enablement to meet the customizations of each of these use cases. And I think that's what you're starting to see. So <clears throat> you're seeing that from the providers themselves and also the MVNOs.
Okay? So what, what do we want out of this? What, are the, what, are the, uh, what is this ideal open mobile IoT core doing? First of all, for, for, the, for the people delivering the services, they want more control, or even the enterprises, they want more control over things such as cost, such as roaming, such as firewall, security policy settings, these type of things that they want to get access for those connected devices, okay? And what they need is more visibility into the network, which historically the MNOs weren't giving you, so you want this, and you want the ability to automate, right? That's what we've been talking about pretty much the entire time up here. All right, and then at the end of the day, that provides a seamless functionality across uh, all the technology, whether it be 2G all the way to 5G. It's the same set of APIs. That's the goal. Okay. Uh, what is available today? So these are the common APIs that you'll see today that are out in the marketplace. Uh, activate, suspend, network cell location, typical things you'll see in a lifecycle management platform like a Jasper or something along those lines. Everybody's seen those. But it's the advanced APIs. This is where we want to focus. And I think people like Twilio have brought this to light. Uh, for us at JPU, this is where we see the real big drive going. Uh, it's getting access to IP networking, VLAN, NATing, uh, identity control for multi mz and eSIM and these type of things. Having the APIs into the entire mobile core, not just specific pieces of it or the subscription layer or this or that, is really what's going to drive the customization to meet the, de uh, the growing demands of use cases that are out there by, uh, by the market. Okay? So, in the end, uh, what, is this, what does this look like for us? So it's uh, uh, basically what we're talking about are private overlay, uh, mobile network overlays, right? Or dedicated IoT cores or dedicated mobile cores. And this is what we're seeing being adopted by as high up as the MNOs, all the way down to the enterprises owning their own, right? All right, the real key to this is that we need these overlays to configure the network, uh, network resources. Uh, allows us to manage the connected devices as if those devices were in our own office, right, within our own network, okay? Uh, overlays allow you to connect to all the technologies, right? So 3G, 5G, we don't care. As long as the overlays are all experiencing the same APIs, it's, 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 they're all the same. Um, the, the idea here is abstract the technology and abstract the location to provide this um, ubiquitous service over the API overlay. Right, so whether it's multiple networks uh, in one country or another, the private network overlay or the standalone dedicated independent core over the top can work over those. Right, so it doesn't matter. It's one ubiquitous service. Um, and the application always has the same interface to the API overlay, right? So we don't need to adapt application or different networks. It's the same set of APIs. And this is what we feel is going to transform uh, the way that, that, the, uh, that the services are consumed for, for, for IoT. So we see this again uh, by the MNOs today. Deutsche Telekom has a dedicated IoT uh, mobile core that's completely standalone from the existing core that they're doing today. Uh, I've given you examples of the other guys. They're all doing something similar. And I think we're seeing it from the MVNOs as well. And then again, uh, the holy grail is the enterprises. The enterprises are wanting more control over this. It still takes a service provider or some sort of network, uh, network operator of some sort to help deliver the solution. But you're seeing enterprises want more and more control uh, of their IoT use cases themselves. Uh, via APIs, integrated into their back office, and these, these type of things. So um, at the end, this is, this is where we think uh, everything will be. Um, okay. So as you start looking at the IoT models out there, uh, there's a ton, ton to look for. Uh, uh, the guys asked us to put in some pricing examples. Uh, the bottom line is you'll see a whole slew of pricing um, options out of the operators out there. You just need to pick the right one that's for you. Uh, and then how do you choose? We've got a set of questions and answers that can help you guide through that. Uh, depending on how many programmable SIM cards you need may depend on which carrier you use. Uh, depending on where you'll be serving, if you need a global service or you know, with a Vodafone or if you need something that's local with a, with a local provider or, or, or services operator. Okay? So you go through these litanies of questions and, and figure out what the best fit for you is. So, uh, that's pretty much our presentation. Uh, please come by our booth uh, to see a demo of, a, of an API-driven uh, mobile core. Uh, we've got programmable SIM cards. We're gonna be doing a workshop to show you what's capable. 
Uh, and again, we're seeing this from all the operators out there in, uh, uh, in different MNOs and different enterprises demanding these type of things. So that's it. Thank you, Tony. Yeah.